Hi there everyone, we're now in our next video in number theory and here today we're going to talk about another chapter in our playlist or in our lessons. Now we're going to start with the concept of the theory of congruences. And to start off, we're going to begin with our first and most foremost topic which is the basic properties of congruences. So we're going to go back uh, a little bit in history. Uh, hopefully you, you watched the first video about um, concerning Gauss, okay, our princeps mathematicorum, our prince of mathematicians, Gauss. So in the first chapter of his famous book and most um, magnificent book, Discussiones Arithmeticae, Gauss introduces the concept of congruence and the notation that makes it such a very powerful technique. He explains that he induced or he was induced to adopt the symbol this one, the triple parallel lines, um, because of the close analogy of it with the algebraic equality, or simply as the equal sign. Okay, so we can remember the equal sign. I know that we are aware of it. The equal signs are only composed of two parallel lines, while the um, symbol for congruence is composed of three parallel lines. Okay, here. Okay, so let us define this um, in formal definition. But before that, um, according to Gauss, Okay, he said that if a number n measures the difference between two numbers, a and b, okay, then a and b are said to be congruent with respect to the modulo n. Okay, we call that modulo n. If not, we call that we call a and b to be incong incongruent. So let's put this in a formal um, way, shall we? So let's put this in a formal mathematical definition. So here let's define a uh, let n be a fixed positive integer. Okay, it's a positive integer, fixed positive integer n. And then two integers a and b are said to be congruent modulo n, symbolized as this. Okay, a is congruent, congruent to b. We read this as a is congruent to b mod, modulo n. Okay, again, a is congruent to b modulo n if n divides a and b, or divides a minus b rather. Okay, divides n divides the difference of a minus b. That is, a minus b is equal to n times this some integer k because n is said to be a factor of, of a minus b. n is what we call the modulus of the congruence relation or simply the modulo. Okay, It's like the clock. In the clock arithmetic, um, it's the one that, that, that um, gets the remainder and then um, and then um, gives you the value of a. Anyways, I'm going to illustrate that to further, um, to clearly explain that one. Anyways, just put in mind that a is going to be modulo n if n divides the difference of a minus b. Or um, conversely, if n divides a and b, so therefore we can say therefore that a is going to be mod, mod n. So to cite some examples, shall we say, um, anyways, the n again is what we call the modulus of the congruence, okay? So as for example, so let's have let's cite some examples here. So consider your modulo n to be equal to 7, for example. Let's have n equal 7. So it is routine to check that 3 is congruent to 24, modulo 7. Why is that so? Okay, let's recall the definition going up here. We say that a is congruent to b modulo n if n divides a minus b. So let's let's apply that here anyways let's show the, the definition first okay if n divides the difference of a minus b therefore um a is congruent to b mod n so let's apply it here okay okay uh, why is this so why is 3 is congruent to 24 mod 7 because uh shall we put it here because Okay, anyways, this is the symbol for because. Um, remember, this is the symbol for therefore. Um, it's, a tr it's a triangle, triangular dot. Um, if you reverse a triangle, so you'll have the, the symbol for because. So 3 is congruent to 24 mod 7 because um, 3 minus 24. So what is 3 minus 24? So 3 minus 24 we know of as negative 21, right? That's, that's understood to say that 3 minus 24 is negative 21 and we know negative 21 as a multiple of 7 okay specifically that is negative 3 
it is negative 3 okay times 7 negative 3 times 7 okay so negative 21 is negative 3 times 7 next let's move on to the next number so we say that 10 is congruent to 3 modulo 7 why is that so because um, 10 minus 3 is equal to 7 we say that it's equal to 7 and we know 7 is is a multiple of 7 because um, 1 times 7 is 7 so that's true therefore that's true it's it's correct though okay how about this 20 um, is congruent to 6 modulo 7 because let's try it again 20 minus 6 is equal to 14 so it's equal to 14 and 14 we know of as 2 times 7 2 times 7 so therefore um, 20 is indeed congruent to 6 with the with respect to the modulo which is 7 okay next up we have negative 31 is congruent to 11 mod 7 why is that let's 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 check that's indeed true so we have negative 31 minus 11 what do we have so they're both negative so we'll have negative uh, 42 okay which is um, 42 or negative 42 is indeed a multiple of 7 because um, negative 6 times 7 is equal to negative 42 okay again negative 6 times 7 is equal to negative 42 okay now let's move on to the next example this next example is a little bit um challenging here so what we have is negative 15 or rather negative 15 is congruent to negative 64 modulo 7 why is that because let's check negative 15 minus negative 64 Okay, it's going to give us what number? So negative 15 minus 64 is going to give us negative or positive, since this is this is going to become positive, right? Positive 49. Okay, so it's like 64 minus 15, right? 64 minus 15. It's positive 49. And we know positive 49 as 7 squared, which is clearly 7 times 7. 7 times 7. Okay, so that is the concept of... Um, the congruence the theory of congruence we have this modulo now um maybe you are thinking in um what's the purpose of this okay where do we apply this in our everyday life um why do we need to study this i'll give you one i'll see cite you one example wherein we're going to apply this kind of of thinking so imagine again we're going to still use the modulo seven and imagine that we are talking about okay Imagine we are talking about dates. Try to look at your calendars, for example. Um, this is mod 7. When you say mod 7, when we say um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay, after we have 8, we say that 8 okay, is congruent to 1 mod 7. Why is that so? So you can try, you, you, can, you can try to verify because 8 minus 1 is equal to 7, which is 1 times 7. Indeed, they are equal. They're congruent, shall we say. How about this? 15 is congruent to 8. We can check that. 15 minus 8 is 7. 15 minus 1 is 14. Right? How about this? 22 um, is congruent to 15, which is congruent to 8, which is congruent to 1. Right? Because 22 minus 1 is, 20, is 21. 28 minus... At rather, rather, 22 minus 8 is 14 22 minus 15 is 7 so meaning we can say that all of these numbers here 1 8 15 22 and 29 are all congruent with respect to the modulo 7 okay with respect to the modulo 7 they are all congruent okay they are all congruent with respect to the modulo 7 okay so likewise we can think of that here in our second part 2 
is congruent to 9. Why is that? Because 9, or rather 2, minus 9 is negative 7, which is, um, which makes it congruent to, or yeah, congruent to 7. Or congruent to 2 in respect to 7. 16 is congruent to 2 because 16 minus 2 is 14. 23 is congruent to 2 because 23 minus 2 is 21 and so on. And you can apply that in all of this. Let's try a random one. Say um, 18 is congruent to 11. Why? Because 18 minus 11 is 7. Another one. 27 is congruent to 13. Why? Because 27 minus 13 is 14. 21 is congruent to 7. Um, this is trivial because these are multiples of 7. So they are, of course, congruent to each other. But you can try. You can see that in modular arithmetic, all these numbers here, okay, everything right here, okay, everything right here, okay, all the numbers, okay, all the numbers here, everything here are all congruent. Okay, these numbers are all congruent. Okay, meaning, in short, yeah, they're not specifically equal, but they are equivalent, or they're, they're congruent. We call this congruent or equivalent classes. Okay, we call them the equivalent classes, or specifically, they are um, in congruence with the class modulo 7, or class modulo n, whatever that n is. So we call them equivalent classes. Equivalent classes. So they are classes of numbers in which they are congruent with respect to this n. Okay. So how do we apply this um, in 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 our real life? Try to imagine. Let's say all the ones here are Mondays. Okay. All the twos are Tuesdays. All the congruent with three are Wednesdays. I'll just use W. All the congruent with four is Thursdays. I'll use TH. All congruent with 5 is RR Fridays, F, I'll use F. All congruent with 6 is Saturday. And all that is congruent with 7 is Sundays. Now, if you're going to look at your calendar and try to look at the number in which they are equivalent, okay, they are equivalent in, in res with respect to the modulo 7, 17 and 10, okay, 17 and 10 on your calendars are on the same day. Why? Because they are congruent with the number of days in a week, which is mode 7. Meaning they are both, in our case here, 17 and 10 are both Wednesdays. 26 and 19 are both Fridays. Okay? If you're, if you're going to look at your calendars, yes, they are indeed the same. Okay? Um, 19 and 12 are congruent. Um, 26 and 19 are congruent. 28 and 21 are congruent. In short, as far as mod 7 is concerned, as far as the number of days are concerned, we go back, for going to Sunday, we go back to Monday. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, go back to Monday. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, we go back to Monday. And then all the numbers here, which is equivalent, which are in a single class of equivalence, mod 7, are all on the same day. All the same day, all the, here, all the numbers here are on the same day, all the numbers here are on the same day, and likewise. Okay, so that's one application of, of um, modular arithmetic. Some call this modular arithmetic or clock arithmetic. Why is it called clock arithmetic, by the way? Because this can be applied in clocks, actually. In just look at you, just try to look at your your clock at home. Let's. I'm going to say, I'm going to write up an a circle, if this is qualified to be a circle. Okay, and then we know that this is uh, twelve here. We have one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, uh, seven. You have eight here. You have nine, um, ten, and eleven. Now, all the numbers here are in mod twelve, modulo twelve. Okay, they are in modulo twelve. Why are they in modulo 12? Because after 12, we go back to 1. Okay, right? There's no 13 o'clock unless it's military time, right? Unless it's military time. So, you know, tw um, by the way, military time goes back to um, 0, 0. That is, they are modulo 24, by the way. Okay, but let's 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 use the, the normal way of reading 
clocks. So we're going to use mod 12 for that. Okay, so we know that after 12, there's 13. Where is 13? 13 is over here. So when it's 13 o'clock in military time, we know that it's 1 o'clock. Okay, 14 is here, 15 is here, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And then after that, we go back to 25. 25 will be on the 13th. Okay? 25 will be on the 13th. So continuing in this manner, let's have 24 here. 25 will be here. And then I think you can imagine so on. You can imagine this. Okay? Likewise, we can go back in reverse. 0 is over here because we're going to go back here. Negative 1 is here. Negative 2 is here negative 3, negative 4, and so on. So we can say that in mod 12, um, we can say that, um, let's try to have some, uh, let's try to think this, this equivalence class, this one. Try to imagine this equivalence class. And let's verify if they are indeed true by the, by the statement of our definition, this one. Okay, let's encircle this. That's quite difficult to encircle this one. Okay, so this one. So we say that 20 is equivalent to negative 4, for example. So 20 is equivalent, or rather is congruent, to negative 4, mod 12. Negative 4, mod 12. Okay, mod 12. Okay, so in a while, mod 12. Okay, why is that? So let's check the definition. So 20 minus um, negative 4. So what is 20 minus negative 4? That's going to give us. Um, uh, 20 minus minus 4 is going to give us positive 4. So 20 plus 4 is going to give us 24. So 24 is equal to, so we say that 24 is equal to um, 2 times 12. So indeed, um, by our by our definition of the congruence relation, so 20 is indeed congruent to negative 4. And we can see that all these equivalence classes are indeed equivalent and equal. Or, they, or shall we say in our terms, they are congruent. Okay, so we say that um, 3 is congruent to 15, um, 11 is congruent to 23, 23 is congruent to negative 1, 24 is congruent to 0, uh, 0 is congruent to 12, 13 is congruent to 1, and so on. Um, as long as we are here in the universe of mod 12. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you would like um, this video and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, I, I think I'll see you soon. Okay, thank you very much.